we all know Golden Axe is a side-scrolling arcade beat-em-up released in 1989 by Sega for the System 16 version B arcade board. But did you know that Makoto Uchida was the primary developer of the game and was also responsible for the creation of Altered Beast? Of course Golden Axe takes place in a different world than Altered Beast, with the former being set in a kind of Greek mythological setting, while Golden Axe is pure Conan the Barbarian fantasy based. You take control of one of three warriors, or two if you have a friend to play along with you. Choices are Gilius Thunderhead, whose twin brother was killed by soldiers of Death Adder, Axe Butler, who is looking for revenge for the murder of his mother, and Tyrius Flair, whose parents were killed by Death Adder. Death Adder, by the way, is the tyrannical giant that all three characters want dead, but I'm sure you've guessed that. Gameplay is the pretty basic affair. Slash and hack your enemies with a variety of moves, ranging from basic attacks to running and jumping attacks, plus a very nifty back attack which deals a lot of damage. Throughout the stages you'll also come across blue imps. These little devils dart about the stage trying to avoid you. Hit them and you'll be rewarded with a magic potion. Various amounts of potion will perform various styles of special magic attacks. Each character has their own style of magic. For the sake of continuity, we'll be using Tyrus in all versions of the game today. For its time, Golden Axe was quite the marvel. Amazing visuals, satisfying gameplay, and a setting unlike any other game of its time. These days, it feels a little mushy, but still offers great fun for those in the mood for some sword-wheeling fantasy action. Mega Drive port is considered to be one of the best, but is it the best? Well, we'll find out by the end of this video. What I can tell you is that this feels much more snappy than the arcade original, and in some areas I'd say even sounds better. Sure, the speech samples are bad, but the music, despite lacking some of the composition found in the original, is pretty well done. Some levels were shortened in this port, but an extra level was added, which includes the addition of Deathbringer a recolored version of Death Adder. This Mega Drive port also adds a dual mode where you can take on enemies in a one-on-one -on -one battle over 12 rounds. Kinda lame, but I do remember having some fun with it as a kid. Next up is the Mega CD port. This can be found on the Sega Arcade Classics collection. It's basically the Mega Drive game, but is now one player only for some odd reason. There are a few enhancements over the Mega Drive release, with a few minor graphical changes here and there, plus the game now uses the arcade music streamed from the CD. Well, apart from the map and camp scenes, they use PCM audio which sounds different to the Mega Drive original. The map theme sounds good, but the camp scene sounds pretty bad. There's no percussion track at all. There are also new voice samples, although they differ from those found in the arcade game. Just as well since Golden Axe the Arcade uses voice samples ripped from Rambo 1 and Conan the Barbarian. The Mass System port is an interesting version. 
It was developed for PAL systems it would seem, as it runs a little too fast on NTSC systems, as you're seeing here. Thing is, it plays way better on an NTSC system. Still, we have all the same problems of oversized hitboxes and jerky scrolling, but overall, playability is improved. What's great about this port is the lack of sprite flicker, which is common on the Master System. The developers of this port got around that issue by using background tiles as replacements for sprites. This means we fixed the flicker issue, but at the expense of a more choppy looking game. Still, the overall package is pretty good. Well, that is if you don't mind playing on your own and being forced to control the Axe Battler. On the bright side, you are still able to select which type of magic you want to use. Talking of which, to use magics in this port, the player must press attack and jump at the same time. This means we lose the back attack. Oh well. Hold on to your sides because you're about to piss yourself laughing at this one. Reno Games, a division of Telenet Japan, made this laughable mess for the PC Engine CD. The game starts off with an incredibly dull opening, followed by a poor imitation of the arcade title screen, followed by the character select, and then another dull cinematic. Then comes the game. Oh my god, why does Tiris look like a mutant hunchback witch? Why is her nose longer when she runs? It's not only her that looks awful, everything looks awful in this port. The areas, bosses, enemy characters. Even the monsters you can ride are bad. The fire breathing dragon actually fires flames out of its neck. This is a pure mess. The gameplay is also terrible. Very sloppy feeling and unbalanced. Enemies can take off way too much damage. This is a serious problem, because the AI is also incredibly cheap. To add even more insult to injury, you have to start from the beginning of the stage when you continue. And this is one of those stupid games that kill you when it clearly says you have one life. I hate that. The only thing this port has going for it is the music. So if you want a very expensive arranged CD soundtrack to Golden Axe, you know where to look. Ok, we'll finish with the consoles for now and take a look at the home computers. Surely the Amiga port can't be any worse than the PC Engine, can it? Well, it sure looks better and props to the developer for actually including Alex at the beginning. He's missing on the console ports we've seen so far. We even have the day color cycle which is cool. The music and sound effects are also rather good. Sadly, the game plays like crap. Well. Maybe not like crap, but nowhere near as well as the Mega Drive or Master System ports. You see, Golden Axe uses three button controls, and we just have one here. So to attack we use the fire button, but to jump we need to push up and fire together. Something that works great on platform games, but not a hack and slash game. Magic is assigned to the alt key on the keyboard, so make sure you are next to it when playing this game. Actually. I couldn't get the magic to activate, so... The loading of enemies every now and then is also rather annoying and really breaks the flow of the game. 
Overall, not as bad as the PC Engine CD version, but still not what I'd call good. It's a shame the game plays so poorly, as it looks rather nice. Next we are onto the Atari ST port which came to us from Dementia. This uses the same art assets that the Amiga port uses, but lacks the day colour cycle, and is nowhere near as smooth when scrolling. It's also odd that this version uses a custom hood, and plays on a small 16x9 like window. As for how it plays, well, it's identical to the Amiga version, but now I can actually do the magic attacks. MS-DOS time, with this port being based upon the Mega Drive version. It even features the dual mode from the Mega Drive game. Playing it is kinda like playing a really bad At Games Mega Drive clone. The sound is scratchy and the scrolling is full of screen tearing. Still, for the time, it was quite responsible for the DOS port of an arcade game. Options for controls are also given consideration, allowing for separate jump and attack buttons as well as magic. If only this port was smoother, it would have been a very worthy contender. Starting off with a funky rendition of the main Golden Axe theme is the Amstrad CPC port. Again, with quite a few Amstrad CPC games recently, I'm surprised to see some lovely coloured graphics instead of horrid ZX Spectrum ported mess that a lot of ports receive on the CPC. Sadly, the gameplay in this version isn't close to the gorgeous looks. Everything has a very floaty feeling and sometimes it is difficult to understand if you are hitting an enemy or if they are hitting you. CPC owners are also let down by the magic types. No matter how much power your magic meter has, you'll always get the same magic type.
no, no, no. This is not right. Golden Axe Duplo Bricks Edition. I'm sorry, Specky fans, but this is just awful. It has even worse controls and collision than the Amstrad version. It looks terrible and it is missing so much content. It doesn't even have the world map. In fact, it counts the camp areas as an actual stage. Just no. This is the Commodore 64 version and as often is the case, a different developer ported this one compared to the ZX Spectrum and the Amstrad. This port was done by Steve Crow and Mark WJ Kelly. This port has so much potential. Smooth and quite impressive animation, good looking graphics and decent sound. Sadly the gameplay lets it down. First of all, there is only ever two characters on screen, you and an enemy. This makes the stages very dull to play and take forever to complete. Then there's the collision detection. Just like the other 8-bit micros, it's awful. Honestly, if this game had been given tighter controls and had at least two enemies on screen at once, it would have been a million times better. Oh, and it's missing the map screen. Okay, finally we're getting back to the consoles. Here's the Wonderswan Color version which is based upon the Mega Drive port. Playing this on the Wonderswan Crystal looks really nice, far better than it does on this video. Gameplay is also good. You have no idea how welcome good hit detection is after playing the micro computer ports. Audio on the Wonderswan can be amazing when using samples. However, the developers of this version of Golden Axe have decided to use chip tunes, which unfortunately lose a lot of channels when sound effects kick in. Still, it's not that bad. Overall, the Wonderswan port is quite nice, but is it the better of the two handheld ports out there? Coming up next is the other one. So here is the other handheld version which is for the Game Boy Advance and appears on the Sega Smash Pack. What this collection seems to be is semi emulation done very poorly mixed with ROM hacking. Either that or a really poor port where they have just taken the Mega Drive assets and tried to make them run on the Game Boy Advance. There are so many problems here. First off is the audio. It sounds awful, shrill and distorted. Then there are the wrong use of colours and the fact that the screen is zoomed in making it snap forward at times. It also means sometimes enemies stay in sections of the screen to the left and right that we can't see. To top it off, the game runs at an inconsistent speed. Sometimes it runs too fast while at others it seems fine. I'd rather play the Wonderswan version over this mess. Thank <laughs> you. 
The Sega Ages port of Golden Axe to the PlayStation 2 isn't famous for being bad. The game has many issues, from its poor stiff animation to constantly getting stuck in animation loops and characters performing throw animations when they have nobody to throw. These problems could be overlooked, I guess, if the game was good, but it just isn't very well put together. The developers took many liberties with the stages. The first stage is now actually two stages long and boring as a result. In fact, the whole game is rather dull, with stages taking longer than they should to complete. The silly added cutscenes don't help either, you'll find yourself hammering the button to skip them most of the time. Same with the magic spells. Talking of them, you now have a magic spell power bar that increases every time you kill an enemy. Fill it up to earn an extra magic potion. This basically means you can spam the magic throughout the stage as it's relatively easy to fill it back up to max 4 or so times per stage. At least the music is pretty good. It does have that going for it, I guess. And just for laughs, here is the awful Tiger Electronics version of Golden Axe. Walk your way left and right, kicking and slashing anything in your way. You can even ride the beasts. Now that is a surprise. What's funny? This actually feels more satisfying to play than the Spectrum version. And let's take a look at all those versions of Golden Axe running side by side. <laughs> 